It's you, it's me, it's YDT. It's season three, episode 177 of You'll Die Trying, a show which pulls back the curtain, takes down the walls, brick by brick, and exposes the true hearts of those caring for those. This time of year always makes me think of all the people that I've cared for over the years, those that are left behind to celebrate, if at all possible, to remember to to mourn continuously this loss that's forever felt every day and some times felt more so than others. I'm speaking specifically to the calls, the families that have forever changed my life. It's not so happy holidays for everybody. Whether you believe it or not, there's an intuition that is formed that happens, I feel, when you are ingrained in the funeral profession. It's one of those things that you can almost call when the death is going to happen. It's almost like you're so connected to the profession that when it's your night on call, you can almost sense... I'm going to get a call tonight or if you hear about someone that is actively dying and they don't even have to be like a family you'd normally serve, meaning the Jones family, Smith family, they always use ABC funeral homes. So they're going to call us. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if a tragedy occurs and someone's on life support and for some reason you just feel hyper connected to the situation and you just know in your in your gut that you're going to be able to have the honor because of course the the loved one will die and that's not what you want but you're gonna have the honor to care for them you're dialed in i remember this time of year and the deaths that occurred. I remember specifically the drunk driver driving the black trailblazer heading westbound and just demolished a car. And the car was occupied by two young men who both died. I remember this family. I remember everything about the family. I remember everything about him. I remember how much he loved Mopar and and all of his family who love him and his friends who showed up in droves and his friend who was in the vehicle with him and how he was new to the area. And I remember how just how loving each family were to one another and the visitations happened simultaneously and the support was phenomenal and seeing this young man's father around or on social media I think about of course his mother and and she is carrying a weight that is an unimaginable he shows his face still I mean she I I don't even know how someone could get up right after but I can't help but have these lumps (laughs) in my throat because this is another Christmas without his son and why it's not a decision that his son made someone else drove intoxicated and hurt so many people and I get to celebrate with my kids and I get to celebrate 
until I don't get to celebrate. I, I think about them. And then I think about the three little kids who were killed in the car crash and whose mother who survived with some of the siblings as well, how they were villainized. Accidents happened to everyone. And I wish I could say that I told my four kids to do something. They all do it all the time without question. And uh, yeah, my, the, the, the vehicle that the kids were in, some of the older ones, took their seat belts off in the back. The, the mother's none the wiser. She's driving essentially a bus. I mean, she could scream, put it on her seatbelt. She thought she, the seatbelts are on and the wreck that was had, accident happened and three of the children were deceased. And I remember going to the hospital one after another, after another. And I think about them during this time. I think about knowing how old those kids would be now. This profession, you're dialed in. This is the first year in 13 I have not been on call on Christmas. 13 years of holding my breath, being on call is the phone right at your hip, in your hand. And you almost can tell when it's going to ring. But but being on call, that's a job in and of itself. Being on call because your brain's there. It's there. I hope that those I generally spoke of and the tragedy that they face day in and day out because of the initial tragedy. I hope that there's a sense of joy, just a, a, a flicker of, because we go about our holidays and we too have experienced grief, yes, absolutely. And we are able to gather with family and friends and do these incredible, um, get-togethers and just being mindful of these people and knowing that there are people who are very sad, yeah, I think is good. In 13 years of being on call, the gratitude I have to not be on call, the gratitude I have to have been called, the gratitude I have to be in a profession that's allowed me the opportunity, even with the backpack as heavy as it had gotten, and I almost am winded sharing the story, the pressure in my chest. It's, it's very real because I'm reliving these families that I love. You grow to love them. You grow to connect with them in a profound way that will always connect you to them. And I wish for them, I wish for you, I wish for everyone to know the love the love that I have for you. And yes, it's how can you love a stranger that you've never met? I, yes, I understand, but I think there's this ability to genuinely just appreciate mankind. And in this moment, you're here in my real estate on this podcast, or you follow me on all the socials, Nathan Morris Music, or the subscribers only bonus noise, which I appreciate because it's opening up that book, that notebook that I talk about it's the writing in the day and then the night and you have to share the heaviness and I do feel that you can have a genuine love for so this holiday this Christmas this this season of joy and comfort and rest I hope it's that regardless of how you celebrate or what you celebrate I hope that you you sense a just a spark of just immense love and peace. And I know where that peace comes from. 
and I hope that you experience it in a very profound way. In the last 13 years of my life, I would not have, I wouldn't have done it different. I have gratitude because perspective is incredible. Again, to those families who are celebrating in a very different way, a chair or multiple chairs are empty. May you experience peace. And this holiday season, may you experience peace. You've all been so supportive this year, 2023, the launch of season three of the podcast, the bonus noise subscribers only, which you of course can subscribe to in the show notes, following me on all of these socials. And then January 8th, the single going to radio, January 12th, the single releasing and so many things to be proud of, mindful of, hopeful for. Be grateful for the life you have and know that you matter. And I appreciate you more than you'll ever, ever know. Christmas is right around the corner. I can hear the bells. I hear the bells. Merry Christmas.